Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 753. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Foley Beach. All right, welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, and we have a special guest this week. Every once in a while, I can get an archbishop to uh, be brave enough to sit on the other side of the webcam and answer questions, and I have Archbishop Foley Beach doing that this week. He's the chair per- chairman of GAFCON, and he is the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in North America. How are you doing today, Archbishop? Hey, Kevin, great to be with you. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little tired uh, As you probably may know, the airline industry is having its challenges, so I spent a lot of time in airports and on airplanes lately that I didn't plan to spend. But uh, God is good and God is faithful. Great to be with you. You just got back from Pittsburgh. How was the consecration? Beautiful consecration. Uh, The Diocese of Pittsburgh is, uh, I think, very excited, and I'm very excited about their new bishop, Alec Cameron. Uh, had a uh, really a tremendous and just a beautiful worship service uh, as we consecrated him uh, to the Episcopate. Uh, great, great day on Saturday. Mm. You uh, mentioned to me before the show that you were on a, a, a camping trip during Lambeth. You didn't get to, to watch the, the news minute by minute and second by second. You probably weren't even watching Unscripted to get your news. That's fine. So tell me about your <laughs> camping trip. <laughs> Well, um, we took uh, with Anglican uh, Leadership Initiative a bunch of young rectors out into the wilderness, into the Colorado Rockies, and uh, did some uh, backpacking, uh, whitewater rafting, rock climbing. And basically what we do is we take folks out of their normal uh, way of living and uh, get out in the wilderness and talk about serious things of life and of their ministry. And uh, this was just a tremendous week with these guys uh, examining uh, our calling and getting clarity on our calling and our ministries, uh, discussing best practices with one another. There's just such an encouragement. Um, one of the things I just really value is, is trying to invest in young leaders as much as I can. And so this was an opportunity uh, to spend time with them. So I did that during the first part of Lambeth, got back. I think the last three days of Lambeth was, uh, was occurring uh, after I got back. So let's take this in segments. Uh as the Archbishop of the ACNA, how is the ACNA doing? I think we're doing really well. Um, I mean, of course, you, you get some news about some of our internal squabbles, but I, I know in my diocese and in the churches I've been visiting as the Archbishop um, just around the province, I mean, people are doing uh, incredible things for the Lord and people are showing up. Uh, we've got people, um, new people. Uh, in our churches, lots of confirmations, uh, lots of children, lots of young people. It's, it's been very, very exciting. Um, so I, I think um, it, it seems like for the most part, we're coming out of COVID. I mean, there's a few places where COVID, um, you know, they really took a, a bad hit uh, mm-hmm. because of COVID. But the majority of folks uh, seem to be coming out of it just in a great place. Another question around ACNA, you're, <clears throat> you're over a decade old now. Um, And I was wondering, have we discovered really what works with church in the ACNA and what doesn't work yet? What what do you mean? Uh, Uh, I'm not understanding. uh, Programs or or systems or uh, church growth that really works, uh, that the ACNA has really uh, adopted, like church planting and stuff like that. I think it really depends on um, the geographic place in the country, some things work in in some places and and they don't work in other places. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we are, are still on the, um, the edge of church planting and and seeking to plant churches in communities where there are no, there's not an Anglican presence, but also to to reach new people with the gospel. Um, One of the things that's fascinating about the ACNA now is, I mean, I know we talked about, you know, we're, uh, you just said we're over a decade old. Well, you know, many of you know we left the Episcopal Church, or many of us did, but now there are more folks attending ACNA churches that were never in the Episcopal Church mm-hmm. than were in the Episcopal Church. And that's very exciting. We're reaching new people. Um, I think part of our cutting edge um, areas is, is children's ministry. I think um, we have some places that are doing that very well, uh, but we're working on trying to, um, to equip other places uh, to, to minister to children in vibrant ways. We want to catechize our young people and help them grow up in the faith. Not just have head knowledge, but have heart knowledge and, and be true disciples 
uh, of Jesus Christ when they, they enter their college years. And they hopefully will survive the college years and come out as fired up young adults uh, ready to minister for the Lord. No, I, I have to agree. I've, I've seen those uh, programs in the AC, and they, they work really good. Um, a quick question that I get all the time is, was the ACNA invited to Lambeth? We were invited to Lambeth. Um, we were invited as observers, uh, but we were invited. And um, our uh, bishops, uh, we discussed it. And then I also took it to the GAFCON primates as to whether we should go or not. And really, the bottom line issue was that because our Bishop Justin has the uh, power of invitation. He can invite who he wants to the Lambeth Conference. Um, And because he invited as bishops in good standing, bishops who are living in immorality, and really that's the first time, in at least in my knowledge of church history, that this was uh, done, that that people living in known immorality were invited as bishops in good standing to participate fully— uh, we felt we, in good conscience, could not go and support that. It would be like we would be blessing that um, uh, by our presence. Uh, now, there were other folks that, uh, among our midst and also other parts of the Global South, that felt like their conscience was letting them to go and stand for the truth, and, and they did, and they did a great job. It is interesting because uh, Gene Robinson was not invited by uh, Rowan Williams to Lambeth 2008 way back in uh, Justin's completely uh, you done who gets invited. And I can see the discomfort and the unwillingness. Why do you think the global South want? Um, they wanted to go and make a statement and fight for the cause. And um, uh, I, I think that um, what, what other many who did not go had, had, had gone and fought for the cause in years past and felt like they were manipulated or patronized, and and they, their voices, you know, they may have been able to say something, but it wasn't going to make any kind of difference. Um, and so they felt their voice would be stronger by not going. Uh, those others, and especially those in the global south, felt like they could go and make a statement and um, and stand and for the gospel and also for the um, resolution not from 1998, 110, um, and and get the get the. Lambeth Conference to reaffirm it, and that was part of their goal. Of course, Archbishop Justin wouldn't let it come on the table, um, and that was a whole understand a whole fiasco about how all that ha- happened and didn't happen, and on and on and on. But uh, but uh, they went and and they spoke loud, and uh, I think they had a a significant impact uh, on the conference. Yeah, you mentioned the impact they had. Uh, they were in a meeting with Archbishop uh, Justin when he accused them of being a tool of GAFCON. He said the Global South is a tool of GAFCON. Can you clear that up? He did? Yes. Is the Global South a tool of GAFCON? Do you have daily meetings of how to overthrow the Anglican Communion with GAFCON? Oh, my goodness. That's that's a tool of GAFCON. Wow. He couldn't have insulted them anymore (laughs) because – um, there's a history of, of Global South and GAFCON that, um, where things, they have not always gotten along on, um, on issues. Or I, let me rephrase that. I think Global South and GAFCON is, are pretty much agreed on the theological stances and moral stances, but, but disagreed on approach or tone. And, um, and so uh, for them to say that, it was like, I mean, I, I don't see how you could have made them more angry. Uh, to be compared to GAFCON because that would have been an insult. He wouldn't have known that, I guess. Um, but uh, wow. Uh, no, we didn't have anything to do with it. Um, as I said, I was in the mountains of Colorado. Um, um, it, it's funny you should say that. And maybe I shouldn't say this, but I am. Um, one night after I got back and I heard what the Global South had been doing, I said to Allison, my wife, I said, you know, I kind of wish I was there to help you know, be supportive of these guys. They're, they're making, you know, they're just doing such a great job. And I said, but the other part of me is glad I'm not there because Archbishop Justin would be blaming me for all the trouble. Um, you know, like he did back in 2016 uh, when we, I was invited to the primates meeting and, and the issue Gathering. was discipline of the Episcopal church. The gathering and I kept had, raising yeah. my hand. <laughs> did you? I kept raising my hand asking, and I, I was the troublemaker, I guess. And, um, 
And so I, I'm, so I told her, I said, I'm glad I'm not there. So he can't blame it on me, but yet he, he's blaming it on Gafcon anyway. Interesting. Interesting. It is interesting. I mean, I, you really... went to the, the primates gathering in London. I was there uh, as well. <clears throat> and Justin said he would enforce the primates desire to hold the Episcopal church uh, accountable for Gene Robinson and uh, their other progressive actions. Uh, have you, do you think Justin did what he said he would do? Uh, t- tragically, no. And that's, that's one of the big, been one of the biggest frustrations is he didn't enforce that. Um, not only that, there were other provinces that, that went the way of the Episcopal church and there were, there were no consequences at all. Um, and I don't know if he just got too busy and wasn't paying attention, but, um, you know, I think the, the uh, ultimate example of that was having Michael Curry preach at um, Prince Harry's wedding, mm-hmm. uh, Prince Harry and we- Meghan's wedding. Uh, I mean, how much more could he, he endorse uh, what was going on in the Episcopal Church? And I always thought that was uh, ironic. Here was, here was a, a man who um, has really done more to, to bring destruction to the, the biblical institution of marriage preaching at the, the wedding, the marriage of, of the royal family. Um, I just, uh, you couldn't make up these lines. I mean, it's just um, amazing. So anyway, I don't think he did enforce uh, those at all. And that's been one of, part of the problem. And, and then, then I remember Archbishop Oko in, in that meeting standing up and saying, so, so these are in effect for three years. What's going to happen after three years? And we got dead silence, nothing. Um, and after three years, nothing happened. So, no, I agreed. Now, no. now, 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 now. Let me just say one other thing. He he would say, and and I think he argued that this past week, that he doesn't have the authority to discipline um, or um, uh, bring any kind of a judgment on on certain provinces. And I want to say, where is your moral authority? Where is your spiritual authority? You have the authority to invite or not invite people to uh, Anglican communion events, and you're ignoring that. Um, Archbishop uh, Rowan Williams um, didn't invite uh, folks living in, in morality to the to the Lambeth Conference, but but he did, and sadly, that's that's the case. Of Lambeth 2022, one of the most interesting statements uh, Archbishop Justin Welbin made is that there are two truths now. One is the the biblical uh, one of marriage, and one is the one of cultural marriage, uh, discovered by uh, the Holy Spirit doing something new in the Episcopal Church and the Canadian Church and the Scott Church. And uh, that's not something the ACNA believes, right? Well, it's not biblical either. That's, um, I mean, it's like post, it wasn't that one of the themes of uh, post-modernity that, uh, you know, everybody has their own truth and yeah. it's valid. And so that's now invaded the church um, and invade, obviously invaded, invaded the thinking of the Anglican establishment. I, I, I was shocked to hear that, um, but uh, that's, I mean, he wrote it in his letter as well, that they're both equally valid. I think that was the words he used yeah. and they're not. Uh, not according to the scripture, not according to the tradition of the church. And if the scripture is the word of God, then um, that puts a lot of people in very dangerous places. Well, it does. In fact, remarkably, and I, I, I thank them as heroes, the Global South called those people who teach that um, false prophets. They did. I didn't hear them say that, but but uh, those who promote that, I mean, biblically, that would be the term, mm-hmm. F- or false teachers as well. Yeah, false teachers. I mean, yeah, false teachers is probably what they said, but you know, this is unscripted. You know, whatever comes out of my mouth just comes out of my mouth sometimes, <laughs> as you well aware. Um, does that does talk- that work for me as well? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm dead. yes. You, 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 as the grace, you get grace by being unscripted. Um, let's talk a little bit about. The future now of the Anglican Communion. Clearly, uh, Justin Welby has chosen uh, to sanctify the liberal cause. That opens the door for places like Gafcon and the Global South. Is there a point in the future, one year, five years, ten years down the road, where we'd, we would see emerging or a closer walk with the Global South and Gafcon? Oh, I hope so. There's so much cross um, pollinization between both gr- both groups and. 
and and with a few exceptions, uh, they make up the same provinces and same uh, primates. Um, when I was um, uh, uh, the well, when let me back up when when Archbishop Oko of Nigeria was the chair of GAFCON, um, he was the vice chair of the Global South, and. Right now, I'm on the Primates Council um, of the Global South as well. I'm also the treasurer um, of the Global South. So, so there's a lot of interface already. It's just that the both, I guess the best way to say it, Kevin, is the groups have different aims. Um, and uh, really, uh, the Global South is more ecclesial. Um, and, and, and GAFCON... Uh, would be more focusing on on the mission and, and being the prophetic voice in, in, the, in the communion. Um, it was good to hear the, the Global South calling the communion to repent. Uh, that's something that GAFCON has been talking about a long time, that we need to repent and, and bring renewal and, and reform uh, to the Anglican communion. Um, by the way, I, I just wanted to share something that I thought was, that was kind of interesting. Um, I, do you mind if I share an email with you real quick? No, go ahead. Yeah. Anytime we have um, internal, I just, I just, internal stuff from the ACNA and you're breaking it here on Anglican Scripted, please, please. <laughs> well, this is, this is just an email I got today. You know who Dominique Steele is, right? He yes, has I do. a program down in Australia. Yeah. All right. This letter was addressed to him and I was copied on it. Dear Dominique, I was just about to share with you the latest, share your latest pastor's heart video, which was great, by the way. When I remembered the most surreal moment of the whole Lambeth conference, on the first day, as the bishops were arriving, I walked into the media room, and to my surprise, Archbishop Ben Kwashi was on the screen, followed by Foley Beach. I was there for four hours, and throughout the whole of that time, various Pastor's Heart videos from GAFCON were playing on the loop, very encouraging to me. And I don't know how it happened, but anyone coming in or out saw or heard your message loud and clear. God moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> I just had to laugh. I have no idea how that happened. But uh, so I was at GAFCON. I mean, so, I'm sorry, I was at Lambeth. Uh, mm -hmm. And so has Ben Kwashi. <laughs> unreal. Yeah, it is unreal. Um, we've come a long I'm way. I'm sorry, I, I have never heard you speechless. I had to read my questions. So I've never heard you. Two questions. <laughs> I'm just, okay, keep <laughs> no, going. Uh, yeah. See, I, I have sure. two roles. I have to be quasi entertaining. I have to ask really important theological questions, and I have to keep keep this rolling. And sometimes I fail at all three. It's just the way I am. You know? You're doing a great job. I'm just distracting you. I apologize. Keep going. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. And the cool thing is, if I really screw up, I can edit it out. They'll never know. And the same for you. Right. Um, let's uh, talk then about uh, certainly one day we hope there's more work between uh, the Global South and, and GAFCON. What pertains to the future of the ACNA? Uh, clearly, Justin doesn't recognize you as uh, an Anglican province, but most Anglicans do. Uh, most uh, provinces around the nation, uh, around the nation, around the world recognize you uh, as an Anglican province. How do we convince the liberals that you are one? I don't think we ever will. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think if there, you know, there are different numbers out there. If there are 80 million Anglicans, we're in full communion with 60 million of them. Um, and that's, that's amazing. Uh, we have not officially, um, and this, this is what Archbishop Justin, and he's right about this. We've not officially applied to go through the process to become part of the official structures of the Anglican communion. Um, and part of that, and I've told him this, is that the trajectory that, that he seems to be leading the communion and those around him seem to be following the same trajectory of what we left with the Episcopal Church. Um, and we saw a lot of that at Lambeth this, um, this, this past week, the pluralism, the lack of um, uh, understanding the biblical morality, the false teaching that seems to uh, be creeping in everywhere. I hate to say that word. I, I just, I, it disappoints me to no end. And so why would we go to all the effort to, to 
to align ourselves in a situation where we're going to have to repeat what we did before. So, so we're kind of have been taking a wait and see approach um, in trying to do the ministry, the gospel, uh, lead people to Jesus Christ, make disciples, uh, teach folks the Anglican way, uh, help people in need, feed the hungry, uh, clothe uh, those who are need. You know, we have lots of immigrants that have come to our country and that are in real need, trying to help those folks as well. On and on we could go about those kind of ministries and, and just see what happens down the road. In the meantime, um, we have incredible partnerships with uh, Anglican provinces all around the world uh, where they are serving us and we're serving them and we're helping each other in, in major situations and, um, and trying to be servants uh, to the rest of the communion is, is, is part of what I see our role in the ACNA and, uh, and not try to push our agenda on anybody, but just love people uh, in the name of Christ. So I, I don't know if I answered your question. Kevin, no, you did. I, I think you did perfectly. Of... Uh, and I think my, my final question, uh, a lot of people say that GAFCON and everybody showed have showed up at Lambeth and you would have had the numbers. And now that we've seen how Lambeth worked out and even the Global South had the numbers, uh, they were the majority of the bishops, it still turned out the way Justin wanted it to turn out. Uh, he got to say that everybody's walking uh, together, uh, his press conferences and his uh, uh, press releases and the BBC followed up and said, everything here is okay. Uh, we just kind of squabble a little bit on sex and please ignore that. Do you believe that the Anglican communion is walking together? Um, I forget which Global South primate said it, but um, whoever said, uh, you know, we have come to gather together but we've not agreed to walk together and we can't walk together with those who are practicing immorality. The scriptures are clear about that. And so um, I think folks want, I mean, there's such a love of the tradition and such a love of the history of what Canterbury represents. Uh, but so many folks cannot walk in the direction that the communion seems to be going. Um, it's immoral. Um, and so um, I, I think the other thing too is is I don't think uh, many of the 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 leadership in the Anglican Communion office understand how the colonization attitude, colonial attitude, the patronization of folks uh, continues um, even when they they don't realize it. And so the way this conference was run, just from what I hear from folks, people felt very patronized in many ways. Um, and uh, I mean, even recently when uh, we talked about the selection of the, the new Archbishop of Canterbury, um, he came out and um, said they've, they've, they've decided to increase the number of non-English folks from around the world on the commission. And so I think they increased the number to seven out of 20 something people are going to select the spiritual leader for the Anglican communion. Well, there's a, a big movement uh, within, within many of the primates that the primates should be the ones who select their spiritual leader. That maybe it's time to separate the Archbishop of Canterbury's office, uh, and how how that's done is, is is really you know not really above my pay grade. But but that that there ought to be the Archbishop of Can if the Archbishop of Canterbury is the bishop of all, all England, the, the bishop and archbishop and primate of all England, then he should be the bishop and primate of all England. And then the primates select who their spiritual leader is. Or uh, you divide it out like, like uh, the Roman Catholics have done, and you have the Bishop of Rome. So you'd have the Bishop of Canterbury, but, and whoever is elected as the, the, bishop, the Archbishop of Canterbury is the spiritual leader. And then there's a different person that's the primate of all England. Anyway, it's time to revisit all of that because this whole colonial process is really um, beginning to affect how the communion runs. So all that being said, I, I, I think it's time for not just repentance, uh, but, but reform and spiritual renewal within the communion. And that's what we're, we've been trying to do in, in a loving, gracious, kind way. Although anytime you speak uh, like this, people call you hate mongers and they, they think you're full of hate, but um, that's just not true. Yeah, f hate or phobia. In fact, people who have gospel phobia will accuse you of hate. It's it's the nature. Yeah. Um, quickly, well, let's finish up here. Kigali, why should we go? 
Well, um, first of all, you're going to gather, be gathered together with uh, Anglicans from all around the world who hold to a biblical um, theology and are, are wanting to advance the cause of Jesus Christ in the world. Uh, we're going to be rubbing shoulders with folks that are hurting, struggling, victorious. Uh, some are under immense persecution. Some are going through terrible famines in their own country, but all have this passion to share the love of God and to share Jesus Christ and the difference that he's made in their lives. And we're going to try to enhance that. Uh, we'll probably also be discussing some of these things about uh, what needs to happen in the Anglican communion to bring about uh, Christian reform and, and biblical reform in the communion. So I hope you'll be there. I do intend to. Got to raise some money first. All right. Thank you, Archbishop okay. Foley Beach, for your time uh, this evening. I'm glad we could get this together, get it out. I'm not sure people understand that they're not watching moments after it's recorded. We're going to put this up tomorrow. It'll be a wonderful opportunity for people to catch up with the Archbishop Foley Beach, the Archbishop of the ACNA. Bye, guys. Great to, great to talk with you. And um, Kevin, I hope you have a blessed rest of the summer. Thank you.